Sun Church Talking Points podcast and today we're here with Willie and Paul and we are thinking today about how to make and grow disciples in Glasgow and beyond. So just to start us off, um, we've been asking this question to a few people recently, um, we'll pick on Willie first. Why are you a Christian, um, Willie? Well, I suppose I could say I'm a minister, so I've got to be. It kind, of <laughs> kind of goes with the job, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, it's a huge question, isn't it? Well, um, at its most simple, I was, I was uh, taught the faith from my earliest days. Um, and at some point during my childhood and then later in my adolescence and then again when I began as a student, probably there were significant moments in all of those times where I had to, um, I suppose, make the decision myself, um, is this is this really mine as well as just my family's? And I can't put my, my finger on a point where I could say, that's when I became a Christian. I'm not sure that language is the right kind of language to use when you're mm. raised in the, in the faith. But um, why am I a Christian now? Because I'm utterly persuaded that it's true. I'm persuaded the gospel is true. Mm. Um, if I didn't think it was true, it doesn't matter how many nice people it lets me meet or what it does for my life or anything like that. It's all about the truth. It's about yeah. the truth of, mm. did Jesus Christ rise from the dead? Is his teaching real and credible? Is there authenticity about all of that? Does the Bible explain the world? Um, and my answer to all of those things is yes. Mm. And... Uh, I think the Bible actually in the Bible's worldview is the only thing that explains the world truly mm. um, so it's a, it's down to it's down to truth conviction reality yeah, yeah. brilliant mm -hmm. uh, what about you Paul you've been asking that question recently so uh -huh. we're asking you <laughs> um, yeah in a similar way to, to Willie grew up um, in a Christian home and was uh, always taught the truth about the Lord's went up uh, going to church. I think I I I certainly pushed back through my mid teens really, and um, I think deep down I was aware that I was um, suppressing the truth. I kind of, I think I, I knew that mm -hmm. I knew God existed. I knew what Jesus had done for me. I I knew that, but I I wasn't really prepared to count the cost, mm -hmm. and so I just I I'll go to church. I enjoy being there, but through the rest of the week, I would not admit to anyone that I went to church or mm. was a Christian. So it was really coming up to going to university that I really had to make a, a clear public commitment, really, that uh, I'm a Christian. And there was a couple of things that got me to that point. Um, one was reading the Bible seriously and mm. engaging with it, persuaded that it was true that, you know, Jesus really had died on the cross and risen, and that is the fundamental turning point of history. Um, but it was also spending time with other Christians. There were, there were two guys who were a bit older than me who I spent time with in that year before going to university, and it was evident in their lives that the gospel worked. Mm. Like there was something deeply attractive about how they lived their lives, how they prioritized things, how you know they weren't they weren't caught up in the trappings of this world, like. You know, there was something bigger at play, mm. and I wanted that, and that's what I wanted to become. <laughs> so it was it was those it was those things: it's being persuaded that's true, and then seeing that it worked, and being you know, being prepared to count the cost, and you know, um, being prepared to be known as a Christian. So that was when I was nineteen, and um, and I've kept going, and um, and it's it's seeing. God at work in people's lives yeah. and it does transform mm -hmm. lives and it's we've seen that haven't we as a church yeah. um, and this is going to be a completely inaccurate quote but you know, C.S. Lewis talks about how you know becoming a Christian just helps them see the world clearly mm. and you, you understand uh, seeing it through the lens of scripture like, of course this is mm. how God has ordered the world and this is how it's meant to be so yeah, um, yeah I think that's that's something of it for me. So when we talk about truth, um, it's not just an intellectual thing. It's living truth, isn't it? It's, mm. it's truth that can be seen mm. um, and the power of that truth and the transforming nature of it mm -hmm. uh, in people's lives, but also in terms of your whole outlook and understanding of the world. That suddenly everything makes sense yeah. um, and begins to make more and more sense. 
um, uh, real truth is is visible and tangible in that sense. It's not a it's not like a theoretical axiom, mm. you know, somewhere um, in the ether. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's it's living truth produces living faith yeah. and uh, change lives. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think what you're saying rings very true with the, the testimonies that we've heard recently. Um, most of the people that we've been speaking to, it's been convic- they've been convinced of the truth mm-hmm. of the scripture, but also having seen it in the lives of Christians that they've met or known, or once they've been in church, yeah. meeting Christians and the living, yeah, the body of Christ living together, like you following Jesus. So, um. Yeah, sorry. When we talk like that, sometimes it, it, it can make us feel inadequate, kind of, because because when you hear, oh, I saw these people who are so different and all the rest of it, and you think, oh, gosh, you know, probably nobody would think that of me. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, what, what, what those people are really saying, they're not saying, I was, I was persuaded because of these fantastically wonderful, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. uniquely extraordinary people. Because actually, they're very ordinary people, just mm. like you. Yeah. But what you saw wasn't something about them, but something that they had, mm-hmm. and something that made a difference. Yeah. Um, and in other words, they're seeing the Christ and, yeah. the, the, and, and the life of Christ in them. They're seeing the power of the Holy Spirit at work. Um, and at first, you can't you can't articulate and understand that. And so you put it in the terms that you think of. You think, well, I'd like to be like him, mm-hmm. whatever it is he is. Mm-hmm. But it's not what he is; it's what he's got. Yeah. Well. Is what he is because yeah. it's what he's becoming because yeah. of what he's got, which mm-hmm. is uh, the, the, you know, the life of the Lord. Yeah, and, you know. and that's what holds us together, isn't it? That we follow and know Christ, and yeah, want to keep following him together. Yeah, and so the challenge, of course, is to just keep following Jesus because mm-hmm. he will then, his influence will be then seen in our lives. Mm-hmm. It's not about if I become a much better Christian, then somehow I'll attract people. Mm-hmm. It's actually if I just keep following the lord <clears throat> others will see who it is i'm following and why and and, and what it's about and yeah. so on so i think it's a bit more liberating because yeah. we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves mm-hmm. and feel very inadequate yeah um, and the t- truth of that is that we are actually inadequate um so we're having a right estimation of ourselves mm-hmm. but it's not to look at us it's it, it, the more we look at the lord and realize the power of uh, of the gospel yeah it liberates us to be pointing people not to us but mm-hmm. to, to others definitely but our life will do that mm-hmm. as we're humbly following him because yeah people will see that there is just a, a different mm-hmm. trajectory a different um uh a, 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 just a, a different explanation for our lives yeah uh, compared with uh, what others perceive they don't have yeah yeah and those two guys i mentioned earlier they had no idea of the influence they were having on me because yeah yeah, you know, at that point they were in their mid twenties, and you know, you know, there was nothing outwardly particularly special, or mm-hmm. you know that they were just living very normal. You know, they were both teachers. You know, mm-hmm. both living normal Christian lives, mm-hmm. um, but, but there was something um, compelling. And uh, I was speaking to a friend recently who who come to faith just fairly recently, and um, she was talking about. Um, some difficult issues in her family, a lot of crisis going on, all the rest of it, and just saying, you know, do pray for me because I, I don't know, you know, I don't know how to handle all this. And I just said, well, um, just by being with them, you're bringing the presence of the Holy Spirit of the living mm. God. Um, and it's not about you, it's about him. So just, mm. you know, don't put pressure on yourself. Yeah. But remember that when you're a believer, you're bringing the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. into the room <laughs> yeah. and into the conversation and into the relationship. Um, and that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that's not to give us delusions of grandeur, but it's to it's to give us courage and encouragement when yeah. when we're feeling the reality, which is that well, we don't know what to do or what to say. Yeah. But we're not on our own. We're not on our own. Yeah. That's right. And as you say, we're most probably unaware of any of what might be happening, but a spiritual transaction is going on, and mm. people people will be aware, even if it's sort of unconsciously and un unexplained or mm. unexplainable by them yeah you know? definitely I mean I remember growing up I could tell there's something really different about people that I'd met who had been who were Christians you didn't quite put your finger on it and they didn't sort of go into a kind of three-point sermon every time you saw them but you just yeah. the way that they paid attention to you remember your, their, your name showed an interest loved you that just really struck me that they're oh what's what is it about those people that are is different you know which is it encouraging Mm -hmm. well what they're displaying to you is um real humanity Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's what holiness is, isn't it? It's it's we. It's one of those words that we sometimes think, "Oh, holy." That sounds like a sort of um, mystical thing or a sort of almost an unattractive thing. But actually, who is the most holy person? Well, it's the Lord Jesus, and the most true humanity. And so, the more we are uh, following Him, the more we're seeking to to act in his way the more human we become mm -hmm. and true humanness is a very attractive thing mm -hmm. um you know inhumanity we know is a nasty thing isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but real humanity is a beautiful thing because it images the lord who made us yeah um and so the lovely thing about that is it's just it it's it becomes autumn we become automatically more you could say evangelistic just by by following the lord more mm -hmm. without having to try to do things mm -hmm. um you know just by because we're becoming more human and that is that's that has a drawing power yeah people were drawn to jesus from everywhere weren't they mm. and of course we're not jesus but we have the spirit of the human mm -hmm. uh risen lord jesus uh, animating our our hearts and our lives and mm. that can overcome all of our uh, deficiencies and inadequacies. Thank God. Yeah. Otherwise, nobody would come to faith, would they? No. no. You know, um, the Lord has put this wonderful task into our hands, but He's actually given us the mm. means. Mm. That's why He sent the Holy Spirit on the church, yeah, uh, and into our lives. As, as Christians, as the church follows Jesus and loves Him, and we do that as we obey Him. Um, you know, Titus talks about the, the, the family of God and mm -hmm. the fact that a, a church walking in obedience adorns the gospel and yeah. beautifies and demonstrates the beauty of it. And that, that is in itself a, mm -hmm. a drawing, attractional thing. Um, so, you know, just simple, normal Christian living will do that, won't it? It will, mm -hmm. it will pull people in. It will be mm -hmm. something of the fragrance of Christ yeah. amongst us. A lot of people that you speak to, they would say, oh, I find evangelism very hard. Mm. So how do we encourage one another to make the most of our friends and our contacts that we have who aren't Christians that we've been praying for? And yeah. Yeah, well, it is, it is hard, isn't it? And, um, you know, none of us finds it particularly easy. Um, even those who in the life of the church, you think, oh, they're kind of natural evangelists. So you look at you look at people in the, the wider evangelical world and think, oh, they, mm. they must find this really easy, you know, Rico, Tice, or whoever it might be. Um, but I think they, you know, I've heard them talk about it, but it's, uh, we are naturally fearful, aren't we? We we fear what we see versus what we can't. Um, we fear man rather than God. And so because we often do that, we're always slightly hesitant to, to want to, to share our faith, um, I, I certainly feel that as well. It's, but how, how do we sort of, how do we counter that? How do we, how do we uh, try and share the faith with our friends and family and colleagues? I, th I think it's trying to remember and be reminded of basic realities, isn't it? Um, there's more to life than we can see. Um, there are eternal realities. There is heaven, there is hell. Um, and I certainly find it helpful just to be reminded of those things because, mm. you know, as soon as you step out the door or as soon as you look at your phone, your horizon's been brought right down to the immediate, to the temporal, um, and not to eternal matters. And so when we're interacting with people, we're not tending to think about their eternal destinies. Um, so I think, I think trying to have that front and centre in our minds that perspective certainly helps me mm. and that uh, it can overcome my hesitancy to speak because actually there's there's eternity in the balance and people need to hear the gospel and respond to it more and more I have to say I find that I, I just want to get words of scripture into mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah I was I was I was very surprised and actually quite rebuked when um We've had several folk recently, haven't we, in, in the church have come to faith. And when you hear their story, the first thing that attracted them was something on TikTok. Well, you know, I, when I first heard that, I thought, that's just nonsense. I don't believe that. But people had seen texts of scripture popping up on TikTok. Well, you know, what I know about TikTok, we put on the back of a stamp. I mean, I have no idea. Um, it, it's of no interest to me whatsoever. But 
words of scripture are somehow popping up and getting into people's minds and you know that should not surprise us because mm -hmm. and and so i'm a social media dinosaur and I, I i don't get involved in it but i i do have quite a lot of uh groups that i'm involved in on on chats on signal or things like that um in whatsapp stuff like that with with quite a lot of acquaintances and and, and some friends and if a, if a conversation goes about something or other um I will try in every opportunity, if there's something worthwhile saying, I'll try and think, right, I want to quote something from scripture here because I don't have anything particularly mm. uh, wonderful to say here, but here's a verse from scripture that comes to mind and I throw it into the conversation. Yeah. Now, sometimes people respond to it, sometimes they don't. But what I'm just trying to do is say, well, actually, the most important thing anybody can hear is the word of God. So if there's something here that applies to this, mm. I I'll do that. And I've been very surprised how often that has actually generated... Uh, useful discussion and, and further conversation and that sort of thing. Yeah. So And that's an easy thing to do. I mean, yeah. you can do that in conversation. You can do it in almost any situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so I now consciously think, well, I've got a whole list of various verses that I, I might have just tucked in the back of my mind that are things that I can throw in at, 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 at various points. Yeah. That's something anybody can yeah, do. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, it, you know, it's just about... We call our Bible studies for the students release the word. It's mm -hmm. releasing the word, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We, we've got the oracles of God mm -hmm. and it's getting into the conversation. And the, the thing is, when you when you first start doing that, you're a bit reticent and so on. But, you know, you, it grows on you mm. and becomes very natural. Yeah. Um, you know, you... You could overdo it, of course. I, you, know, you could become irritating if, if the only thing you ever said was answering somebody. You could, it could sound sanctimonious. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're probably most of us a long way from that. Um, so that's something I would encourage, yeah. just saying, look, throw it in as though it's as normal as anything else. People will say, oh, yeah, I saw that in the news or I read this in the newspaper. Well, we can say, oh, yeah, well, the Bible says that, of course. So yeah. what would you expect? Mm -hmm. Definitely, um, yeah. I was speaking to somebody just a few weeks ago and we, we started talking about the news because it was all so depressing and awful. And yeah. uh, then it was, it was really good because you had the opportunity to then talk about God and his justice and yeah. judgment and the fact that there will be justice one day for all these horrible things that are going on. Yeah. And yeah, it was just, I mean, I guess I didn't know that we were going to talk about that, but I guess lots of people do end up talking about the news because it is often yeah. so shocking and awful and people watch the news multiple times during the day, don't they? So... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's that's definitely a really helpful thing. Um, obviously, um, what I think has been really encouraging with um, some of the people that have come to faith in our church re family recently is that they've, the first contact was church on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, which often people are like, oh, I couldn't possibly bring them to a long service with a long sermon and with these strange songs that we sing and everything else. Yeah. And there's just mostly men up front, you know, um, people wouldn't enjoy that. And it's, we found the reverse, thankfully. Mm. Um, but we've also got the life course coming up in a month's time. So, Paul, why are we running the life course when church has obviously been like such a great hit? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I think I've probably been quite challenged over recent years just in terms of my thinking about about Sundays, particularly um, because it's I think it's the best the best place to bring someone if they're interested in the Christian faith and. Sunday's number one, um, but I think I think the benefit of having a life course is it just provides a bit of a focus, mm. and it's you know it's really geared up to uh, address the basics of the gospel. Um, and you you may not sort of if you come on a, a set of Sundays you may you may just not get the sort of whole picture in a in a condensed form like that. So I think it's a really good addition, and um, and it's also a very good way for us just to identify okay who's who's around the church at the moment who's who's new who's expressing interest and let's let's get them along to the life course and um we can hear some of their questions we can talk about it it just means we can follow them up mm. much better that, that's what we've seen is, is folk who've come to church they've come onto the life course come mm. to christian explored they're still coming to church but we, we've been able to address their questions much more openly because they've had a, a forum to to raise them um the interaction i think is important isn't it yeah i mean it's for the same yeah. reason that we have um growth groups and release the word and other bible studies and different things it's it's a it's a it's another format isn't it mm. um there's a limit 
to what you can do in a very large gathering. Yeah. Um, and teaching from the front is, is the most appropriate form of that. And, you know, nobody, there'll be nobody who would have more concern than me to say, look, it, the thing that the, the church, uh, I would stand with them um, with Peter Forsyth is that a church stands or falls on its preaching. That's the absolute bedrock. Um, but, um, an utterly pulpit centered ministry is not the same thing as saying you must have a totally pulpit restricted ministry mm. and that it's only ever from the pulpit that the word of God, because apart from anything else, um, uh, the, the Bible um, tells us, doesn't it? I mean, think about Deuteronomy. You must have this word when you're getting up, when you're going out on the doorposts of your house, when you come, when you go, what that's saying is the word of God has got to be permeating all of life. Mm. And there is a little danger if, uh, all you have is the format of a Sunday service. There's a little danger that that you are unconsciously making people think, well, this is a Sunday thing, and then it doesn't connect so much with the with the rest of the week or with the rest of life. And so it is important to have manifestations of that as well. Um, uh, but it's just another way of engaging, isn't it? But but yeah. I think I think the key thing is that the two are together. Yeah. Um, it's it's a very dangerous thing to think. Well, if you want somebody to be converted, you bring them to a course or you read the Bible with them or you do a one-to-one -one with them or you do anything other than, than the church. Um, it, 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 Cyprian's maxim from the second century, outside the church there is no salvation, is true. Um, the church is essential. It, the, it, the church is the temple of the living God. The church mm -hmm. is where the Lord is present among his gathered people. And so there has to be some connection with, with church. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I've, I've had experience recently with in the last couple of years with quite a number of acquaintances who've become friends who have come to, to Christian faith and a number of others who have engaged with quite a lot personally with the Bible and, and with all kinds of things. Without exception, the ones who have really come to faith and have really stuck with it have got involved in a church. Yep. Um, those who have not done that are not really there. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're interested, they're entertaining, they're maybe reading the Bible, they're, they're um, but they're on the outside, mm. and and it, it's been very striking to me to see that. And um, I mean, that's a challenge. Some of these yeah. friends of mine are at a distance, and so the, the challenge is finding a, a real church. <laughs> but yeah. a very a very lacking church is still a whole lot better than no church. Mm. Um, so I think there's something there really really important in our thinking. We want people to be in church, mm. and we want people to be then following up in these things. And recently, I think it's right to say, isn't it that Many of the folk in the life course have come to that, having already been coming to church. Yeah, so I think you know, I think the most the most recent one we did in in May. I think the majority, Katie, yeah. were we had, we had quite a number of guests over the over the five weeks, but there's maybe ten mm. or twelve who are pretty regular, mm. and almost all of them mm. have been coming to church. Yeah, um, and continue to come to church. So I think that's really what we want to see more of. Mm. Um, yeah. So if if I've got a friend. <laughs> You know, we've got you know, folk down the road that we've been talking with for a long time, but and they have been to church in the past. But that that's my greatest desire as I come to church and life course as well. Great, but uh, Sunday is such a central yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, I think that that's uh, that's key. And how would you maybe encourage people who would to be like maybe thinking, okay, I'd love to be able to do what you're doing, Willie. Really be able to quote verses in the bible but my memory's terrible i'm not like can't be worse than my memory <laughs> i'm not really good taste and i'm, and I'm struggling maybe... to remember what your name is Katie. <laughs> that's fine <laughs> Jemima, whatever <laughs> but you know what how can we encourage our church family who might just be thinking oh, i'm not an evangelist i'm not a preacher um what role do i have um how could we how can we encourage people to to see their part and everyone has a part in this well, um, we can only be what we can be, and we, we, you know, we don't need to have enormous expectations. The Bible's a very long book, but you know, I would, I would think that it's not beyond most people to learn half a dozen verses, or you know, you don't have to learn them by heart, but even to just have half a dozen verses that you think, okay, what's something I can have? Well, I think we did this some years ago mm. when we were opening up in, after the renovations in Buchanan Street, we had people in the building because lots of people used to come in. I think we had sessions, didn't we, mm -hmm. where we helped people to just think of a verse or a portion of scripture they could turn to if some random person came off the street and, in a, you know, and had a 
particular issue. So somebody comes in and they're very upset because they've been bereaved. Mm. Where do you where do you turn them to? You know, that's not a difficult thing, is it? There's a, hu- a hundred places you could, you yeah. could do, but you have your one and you know it. And you, if somebody comes and, and you've got a friend in that situation, you think that's that's what I'm going to share with them mm. or somebody who's ill and worried about that or um you know whatever the issue is yeah. have a think half a dozen verses if you can do that mm. and and say to the lord um please help me to know which one to use please help me to to do this but if you've got those things in the yeah. back of your mind that's not very difficult no. but once you think about it yeah. most of us could do that very very easily yeah uh, and if you can't, you really must be asleep in church all the time because, um, you know, there must be something yeah. that, 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 that you can do. Ask yep. the Lord. Ask yeah. the Lord to help you. Definitely. And just do that. You don't need to have the Bible memorized. Yeah. You don't have to read Greek and Hebrew. You just have to know. Think about things that have meant something to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's great because you can say to somebody, um, well, you know, I, I remember when I went through something similar, this verse was really important mm. to me, it, you know, I'll share it with you if you like. Yeah. In our uh, society, people don't do that very often, do they? They don't share particularly personal things or things that really matter to them. It's often about superficial things quite often. But I think it's it does really strike a chord when people then start opening up with you if they've, you've built up and established a good relationship and friendship and trust yeah. that people will start talking about things that matter. Yeah. Um, you know. Or prayer. So I, I don't think... It maybe has happened. I can't think ever when I've that, that anybody has refused for me to pray with them. Mm-hmm. So you got a friend who's going through something difficult. You're listening. You may think, well, I, I, I don't know what else I can do. But what you can maybe say is, well, look, um, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. For, I'm going to be praying for you. In fact, would you mind if I just pray for you right now? Mm. You know, ninety nine times, probably a hundred times out of a hundred, yeah. uh, there might be somebody who will say, oh no, I don't want that. Um, in which case you just well that's fine I'll I'll but I'll pray for you yeah well even having said that mm. you've introduced yeah. th- something you've introduced a whole un- concept to them that actually there is a God who you can pray to mm-hmm. and even if they don't believe that or haven't believed that um, you've told them you believe it you've told them it's real you told them you're going to be doing it and you've introduced that little thorn into their yeah. flesh haven't you yeah um, but in a context where you're doing it not because you want to argue with them but because you love them and you want to care for them and you're saying i want to bring you before the lord well you know that's that speaks to people definitely and even if nothing else is said and and you, you don't have to then sit down and have a half hour discussion about why prayer is important it's just about saying well i'm your friend i, I know you i'm concerned about you mm. this is what i do yeah i okay. got and getting into these sort of conversations uh, just opens the door, doesn't it, mm. to say, well, you know, this is what I this is what I can share with you. But you know, why don't you come to church? And you know, we hear the Bible taught yeah. every week. There's people you can ask your questions to. And it's really your thorny questions. Go and speak to Katie, and yeah, she'll happily answer to. all your difficult <laughs> questions. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the great thing about being in a church, isn't it? Mm. Because as soon as you bring someone through the door, a whole yeah. bunch of folk there to help welcome them and get to know them yeah um so i I think you know getting over that pain line i think as rico tice talks about just you know Mm. going there and that in the conversation and just saying right i'm let's take this a bit deeper and um talk about what you love about church or what you love about the lord jesus or and once you've had that sort of discussion it makes it easier to say well come to church it's it's a really key part of my life um come and come and find Mm. out more yeah um, and we can all we can all bring people along. Definitely, um, I think in the Change Lives in magazine that we were handing out last week, yeah. there were some really helpful um, conversation starters that you could try out. And I guess a lot of um, we want to encourage people just to try doing things for the first time and getting outside our comfort zone in terms of what we talk about. So, you know, whether it's, oh, I couldn't have got through COVID without my church family or one thing I love about Jesus is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, share and just almost it's training yourself, isn't it? To start talking in a way which initially maybe if, you know, maybe last week you would, wouldn't have dreamt of talking about it in that, that way, but being prepared before you meet people, okay, what am I going to say? I'm just praying for opportunities to talk about things which you don't talk about normally. And mm. once you've got through that first time, 
your friend might be a bit surprised, but actually the next time it won't be a surprise and they'll be expecting it and they yeah. might bring it up with you the next yeah. time. So well, we've, we've no idea what's going on in people's lives yeah. really or what's really going on in their hearts. Um, I'm, almost, sorry, go on. I'm almost surprised that, you know, folk who've come to faith, you know, I've seen people come to church. I think, oh, it's great they're here. I never see them again, but they come and they come back and mm -hmm. they come to faith. And you know, I've sort of mentally written them off, but actually yeah. the yeah. Lord's at work in their lives. Um, so I think it's just, mm. we don't know who the Lord's at work in, yeah. do we? No, we don't. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you about a f uh, friend of mine um, who um, I've been interacting with a bit recently, lives, lives down south. But um, last time we'd actually met and, and talked, um, she talked, uh, we, we were talking about a particular um, church south of London and in a different context. And uh, she said, oh, well, that's, where, that's a church I used to get taken to at school um because we used to have to go and do things there and so on and i said oh are you, do you have anything any connection i no 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 i'm a com committed atheist um and that was about a year ago and i mean she's a very very intelligent person and in fact as a matter, as a matter of fact i've just been reading a book that uh, she's written and I, I heard her in an interview just a few weeks back and uh, talking about um experience of the last few years and covid and so on and she's been somebody who'd been very involved with um in scientific research and so on but just there was a a, a a question of have you know how have your experience of the last few years changed you and and she just said well i used to be a very committed atheist but i'm definitely not now so i pricked on my ears and i thought how interesting because i think things have moved on here so i dropped her a message and um saying you know i'd love to chat again about that I just heard what you said and you know uh see what happens and she came actually straight back to me and said how strange that you just contacted because I've been I've been watching this video that uh, somebody gave me about um, how the how the Old Testament fits together. I'm just really interested by it. I realise I haven't got a clue, but I definitely need to know more. Um, and she said I was just thinking about you because I've been pondering the whole business of evolution and creation, all of these things. And I thought, well, you must somehow have thought about these things. And uh, and then your message came in. So I went back and said, yeah, I have been thinking a lot about these things. In fact, I've just been just finished writing a book on Genesis. Um, you might be interested. And she said, oh, yeah, I'd really love to. So here I've sent her off my manuscript. She started yeah. reading this book on Genesis. But even better, um, what she said was, I've realized I can't do this on my own um, uh, as an amateur. I probably ought to get myself into a church. <laughs> well, my ears pricked up. Yeah. And I then went and did a bit of searching around and hallelujah well she told me she'd gone she told me her very local church was full of pride flags and rainbows and all of this sort of stuff she said right well, i don't think much of that um but amazingly i managed to find very very close uh an evangelical church with a pastor i knew i was able to get in touch and hallelujah she's been going for the last two weeks um now i don't know what's going on i'm desperate to know and all the rest of it but i'm just praying to the lord and thanking the lord that that's happening and yeah. you know I, I i feel very excited yeah uh well you know that's it, it, just it that really encourages you doesn't it when yeah. when that happens to somebody you know and a friend it's just Definitely. there's nothing better is yeah. there and 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 it's just it's encouraged me personally because there's nothing i can do in my mm. ministry in our church here and that sort of thing yeah. But it's reminding me the Lord is at work and it's just reminding you that you don't know no. what's going to come up. It was a sort of, yeah. you know, why did that happen? Why did I happen to listen to that and hear that? All those things yeah. come together. You know, it, that sort of thing is happening all over the mm. world, all the time. And it can be happening in our lives. And, yeah. you know, if you start if you start putting it out there, you know, it's like fishing, Absolutely. isn't it? You're not going to catch yeah. anything if you don't put your hook in the water. Yeah. But... You you get to the river and you and you and you cast and ask the Lord and see what happens. Um, yeah. So you know the Lord is doing things all the time mm. through His people and just through contacts and friendships and these sorts of things. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited about it because one of the things when one of the things it's a paradox, isn't it? But when you're in full time ministry, uh, you, <laughs> somebody like me, you know, by the nature of it. I'm not in an office with hundreds of other people. I'm not working in a hospital anymore. I'm not in all these places. Actually, my life forces me to be around Christians a lot of the time. Mm. It's actually quite hard uh, yeah. on a personal level to have lots of contacts with people who are not Christians um, in a sort of non-official mm. capacity. It's one of the frustrations in a way. Um, it's been one of my great 
joys and excitements uh, in this last few years that through various things have managed to um, have these sort of contexts mm. and and uh, it's just so exciting and yeah. I kind of think oh you know most normal people have this all the time isn't it <laughs> wonderful um, and and it is it's yeah. it's this is how the Lord works so I I just want to say look if my experience is anything to go by uh, it should be all the more yeah for people who are working in a school or a hospital or a factory or a you know the police or or, or whatever it is definitely no, people are true. people's lives are they're looking right? god has put eternity in our hearts mm. people know deep down that all this stuff that they think they believe is nonsense they know it they just but it's such a terrible thing to have to admit it isn't it mm. you know to to admit that the way you've lived your life and the way you've looked at everything is it's what you were saying earlier you're suppressing the truth mm. but that's the truth is is unsuppressible ultimately mm. Um, which is why people get in such a, a mess in their lives, isn't it? They live with so much conflict. Um, and when somebody comes along who's unashamedly at peace with the truth, hmm. it's very it's very attractive to people. Yeah, It's challenging because yeah. it may say, well, you know, I want that, but I'd, mm, I'd have to not have this, this and this. But it's, there's a powerful, powerful attraction, the fragrance of life unto life. Yes, it's the other side because it people will fight against it, but a powerful, a powerful thing. So it's really important to just keep that in our minds every time we're kind of feeling like, oh, let's yeah. not bother, or I can't share, or you know, I don't want to ask or invite. Then it's terribly, yeah. you know, the, it, the devil is constantly on us to make us ashamed of what we believe. I, I remember a time once I was years and years ago. I was going into uh, the, one of the hospitals um, in Glasgow in intensive care and a very difficult situation and I knew that what that family needed was for me to get the Bible out and read and pray with them and that's what I was I took my Bible with me and I knew I went in and I saw in the corner there was a hospital chaplain who I knew um, this was in our days still in the Church of Scotland and he was a an anti-gospel man and he was looking over and sneering. And I, I had my Bible in my hand and I could see the sort of the sneering look on his face. Um, and what what all of that was saying to me was, um, he thinks this is this is absolutely ridiculous. This is the last thing you should be doing, coming in to see in this tragic situation. You know, don't do it. Just, you know, don't let him think you're a nutty fundamentalist who's got nothing to say other than the Bible. And I felt this intense battle <laughs> going on to get that bible out and actually open it and sit down and and, and do that and i remember after thinking goodness that was so difficult why why was i doing that and it was because i i didn't want to be i didn't want to be branded as a fool and as a fundamentalist and as a one of those evangelicals and all of these things um i was ashamed of that i really was um why did I find this so difficult? Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I so we have that all the time, don't we? Yeah. And that's yeah. that's really what it's about. Yeah, we the devil wants us to it, it, to just you know, to, to run soften, away to soften it as well. And yeah, what we need to do is yeah yeah set up the whole gospel yeah in all its fullness. Yeah. Um, and that's why yeah. it brings them to church, no matter the passage has been preached on. Exactly. Because it's God's truth. And you might think, oh, that's not the best passage. I'll wait till next week. But yeah. you know, the Lord's the Lord is sovereign. What happens on a Sunday is fundamentally a supernatural mm. yeah. encounter of the living God. So we should be able to bring folk to any Sunday. I need to remind myself of that fact. And that's why with the life course, we set out the gospel very mm. straightforwardly. Um, you know, we're, not, we're not doing five minute talks. You know, no. we're doing 20, 25 minutes because if the law's at work yeah. in someone's life, they're going to listen. Mm. Um, we don't need to sort of pander to it. Um, no, what and, we're saying to people is this is so important. Yeah. It can't be just done in, yeah. a, in, in, in a moment. Yeah. You've got yeah. to deal with this properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a serious thing. Yeah. You know, you'd be, you'd be kind of, you, you'd, you'd think it was ridiculous, but you'd, you'd feel very short-changed if you paid money to go to a financial advisor or to a lawyer or something else and you then you know they just give you a sort of a, a five minute 
superficial summary of something. You know, you, you want to think, well, hang on a minute, this this guy's not taking this seriously. This is a serious issue we're dealing with here. I want to know about investing my pension, or I want to know about you know dealing with this legal case, or I want to know whatever it is. Mm. We, we, we can we can we can give off very wrong signals by trying to say, well, actually, it's not that important. We'll just, you know, don't worry, it won't be long. Don't worry, it won't be long. <laughs> what are we saying? You know, you're coming to deal with the most important thing in the whole world. Um, don't expect us to skip over this. Mm. I mean, why would we? Um, so confidence, the biggest hindrance is our own confidence in God and God's power and in God's word. That's really the truth. Mm. That's what I had to overcome that day. Um, and, and and that's what we have to overcome all, all the time. Mm -hmm. But every time we do, that old hymn, each victory helps you some other to win. You know, every time you you you, you, you beat the devil down and you and, and, and you do what you're supposed to do, um yeah. you get stronger, don't you? Yeah. I mean but and because you see, oh goodness, this is amazing. Yeah, definitely. No, it's it's really helpful. And and of course, don't get knocked back. You you will get knockbacks. Yeah. And you'll get abuse and all those things. Have a read through the Gospels. Have a read through the Book of Acts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if, if you're getting that, if you get, if people, some people are getting furious, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. But others, it's always, you know, some, you know, ran him out of the synagogue and tried to kill him, but others came and, and believed, mm -hmm. you know, all the time, isn't it? And we'll see that, the Gospel divides. Yeah. Um, and, and you can't have the one without the other. So, so you've got to expect that. That's what Jesus yeah. tells us. And, 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 and we will. And, you know, if people consistently refuse, well, Jesus says, that, you know, don't cast your pearls before a swine and, and, mm. and um, shake the dust off your feet. And, but there's plenty of people who will listen. Yeah. Um, we just got to mm. toughen up a bit, I suppose, yeah. is the answer, isn't it, yeah. really? Definitely. And just go for it and not be afraid to, to try. And yeah, there's so many people in the city, isn't there, that are... Well, you're out on the streets a yeah. lot, Katie. Yeah. I mean, you know, not everybody, I get it, not everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I find that very difficult. I'm not that sort of person. Okay. Um, uh, maybe that's just I'm a wimp. No. But but I think I do think some people are, find it easier to engage a conversation. But yeah. one of the things maybe that makes some people reticent is is they think well nobody's going to be interested, nobody's going to listen. But but you you find very surprising things. People oh, are. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, it's the opposite of what you think. I, the 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 worst thing is to presume when you see someone, whether they're looking very smart or they're very casual, whatever they're wearing, and just judging on appearances what you think they'll they'll say to you people um surprise you all the time and you yep. just never know what's going to come out of people's mouths when you stop and talk to them and mm -hmm. i think one of the most striking and sad things is i find i meet um i talk to people from all ages but often people 70 plus um men and women and i say oh i normally say to them excuse me you know can i ask you a question do you have a faith and what in and so many people have said to me, oh, I've never really given it any thought. And to me, I just think that's mm. devastating because you think they probably do know Christians. You know, maybe they have and they've just forgotten those conversations. But how many of the people that you stop and meet know people mm -hmm. that just ha have been too afraid to stop and ask them and encourage them to think about it? Because I, I've, I mean, I'm not 70 yet, but, you know, you think when I get to seven how do you get to that age and you've never given it much thought you know people say things like oh well there must be something out there but I've got no idea and that is very common not just the people who are over 70 but for younger people as well um people we've had, we've had yeah. a guy on the one of the recent courses who's come back to church after over 40 years he's in his 70s and he's I think he's coming to mm. real life isn't he and uh, mm -hmm. you know what what's been going on the last four decades? It's kind of yeah, yeah. yeah. For a, for for an older generation, of course, a lot of them have uh, have been inoculated against real Christianity by establishment Christianity mm. and dead Christianity, uh, dead churchism, which you know they maybe had mm. to have at school or take to church when they're young, that that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so there's an so they've not experienced. So they've got they've got a a, a, a straw man in mm -hmm. their mind. They've not had real teaching. But although um, 
Although some of them do have, because they have had embedded in mm. them some sort of knowledge of yeah. scripture and some um, and some sort of Christian teaching and worldview and ethics and so on. Mm -hmm. So there is that, and there are people who are who are, I think, um, you know, this sort of fifty plus generation who probably still got that in their background from schooling yeah. and, and 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 that sort of thing. I think one of the things that the the absurdity of some of the stuff going on in in society today and the and the you know the extreme woke stuff and the transgenderism and all, just this whole constellation which which many people are looking at saying this is utterly nuts um and they are beginning to question and i, I think there is quite a lot of folk then saying oh well, maybe I need to re-examine what i rejected mm -hmm. um and so the really important thing then is that there is some real living mm. christianity for them to to, to to, to examine and so for them coming back to church after 30 or 40 years or whatever yeah. um i think is a very striking thing if they come and they hear something real because yeah. they recognize the form they actually feel reasonably comfortable in a building that looks like a church and with mm. hymns mm. that vaguely sound like hymns they used to sing and bibles and that sort of stuff it's not completely weird and different mm -hmm. um but they're now here they're now actually listening yeah and and that's i think it's there's an important thing there because uh, maybe there was a time when um, not looking like a church and being completely and utterly different from what anybody expected was helpful. But I think if there was, that time has passed. It's mm. very interesting that I read something recently about the Church of England, and apart from in some um, evangelical churches, the only growth that there is seems to be in cathedrals. Mm. Whilst people are seeking authenticity, they're not wanting newfangled stuff they're not wanting weird stuff they want to think okay I'm, i want to examine christianity let's let's go for the real thing uh probably a cathedral is the place to go because it's it still looks proper and people wear robes and there's choirs and all this kind of stuff that you know they're a bit muddled about that but but they're seeking authenticity mm -hmm. definitely and it, what is so <clears throat> interesting to me is that the number of people that will take a gospel if you ask them, have you read the Bible as an adult? Yeah. Mm. Most of them will say no, and most of them will accept a gospel. Yeah. And yeah. you you just, yeah, I was completely wrong. You know, my presumption would be, oh, no one will want to take a gospel. And actually, you you, you kind of give them out. It's, it's, people are very willing to take them. I mean, whether they read them or not, obviously, I don't know, because you don't kind of take yeah. their contact details. But it just, it does show you, I suppose, that there is a hunger and people have no idea what the what the Bible yeah. actually says and what the gospel actually is. So yeah, people are not going to come to real faith without getting interested in the gospel and interested in Jesus and interested in what God is about. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't get people converted and say, "Well, let's leave out all of that because it might put them off." I mean, that's like saying, "Well, um, I want to learn tennis, but let's leave out all the actual tennis, um, uh, you know, in case it puts me off." it's bizarre isn't it people people are going to have to get interested and the people who are interested then will actually want to get to the heart mm. of what it's really about and they're not going to do that unless we give them the meat yeah. <laughs> um the the, the 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 gospel and the scriptures so don't be afraid of that if people aren't interested they're going to reject everything it doesn't matter what you do mm. what you leave out but if they are if you leave it all out how will they get more interested that's yeah. right. That's that's we kind of go straight at it with, with the life course. You know, we tackle big questions each week, but we ask questions like, "What is a Christian? Who is Jesus? Mm. Yeah. Why did he die on a cross? <laughs> How do I become a Christian?" So, we're, we're trying to go straight, straight into it and and get to these questions and not flirt around the edges. And yeah, um, what do you find? I'm interested in that question when you ask people, "What is a Christian?" Do you find people have much of a clue? Uh, you get you know, we get really mixed answers, I think, don't we? It's um, you know, people know it's something to do with Jesus. They know it's to do with church, but um, there's probably a lot of vague thinking mm -hmm. about it. I don't know what you've mm -hmm. had, Katie, when yeah, you've been around the table. Yeah, I think it's sort of like moral living, following like the laws of the Bible and yeah. the Ten Commandments, and yeah. going to church. Um, but the, yeah, there's a huge amount of confusion, and mm. most people think it's probably moralistic, and that's mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Um. And you're sort of anti, you're more defined almost by what you don't you're like watching. and don't agree with yeah. rather than what you do follow and who you do follow. So, Paul, um, we'll probably wrap things up, but yep. can you remind us when is the life course starting? 
Yes, so we start on Thursday the 28th of September, 7.30pm, Bath Street. Great. So plenty of time to go, but uh, do you think about folk you could bring along. Brilliant. Come along. So if you've not been to the life course before, yeah. we're always keen that folk in the church come and just see it. And, you know, everyone who's done that has been quite enthused. And you know, there's nothing better than seeing non-Christians yeah. coming along and, and seeing it. Um, yeah. I think uh, a rather indelicate way to put it is our friend Dave from Australia. It's like crack for Christians. You know, it's seeing seeing folk coming and engaging with God's word. There's nothing better um, mm. to get you excited and uh, engaged. So, yeah, folk come, bring on friends. Brilliant. So Thursday the 28th of September. Fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing. That's great. Yeah.